Jesus, heal the sick tonight. Amen. Heal the sick tonight. Amen. Touch Sister Phyllis Kinzer and I see you. Touch her right now, Lord. Would you please be merciful and kind? Go down in the hospital and touch her, Jesus, and raise her up tonight. She's such a beloved sister here in our midst. Every one of us, Lord, lifts her name. Oh, in a moment you can heal her. You can deliver her. And Jesus, heal and be with the saints that are aged tonight and couldn't be here because of the weather conditions on the highway. Be with those who've had some misfortune or some problems or issues in their life. Tonight, be with a troubled nation, America, that is so troubled and so full of sin and needs to be forgiven of their sins. Oh, God, don't curse the whole nation, but let the nation have mercy. Yet, Lord, that the church can mature and develop. Oh, God, in a nation of drugs and alcohol and all kinds of sins of flesh and nature and mankind and even beast. God forgive us and help us and wash us tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for the joy of the Lord. Thank you for the joy of the Lord. Thank you for the power of God tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for coming in. Oh, Jesus. Thank you for the song, sir. Thank you for the songs of praise and joy. We lift our hands, we lift our hearts, we lift our voices, and we praise you, and we thank you. In the name of Jesus, over the whole church tonight, and sweep over us, lend us and heal us and help us. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and praise the Lord. Everybody said, praise the Lord. And everyone worship God and everyone praised Him. And all of the music praises Him. All of the choir praises Him. All of the elders praise Him. All of the young people praise Him. All of the aged praise Him. Hallelujah. Be seated for a moment. Praise the name of the Lord. <coughs> moment it's customary on Wednesday night for our young people to go into their place, but I'd like to caution if you're not going out tonight to learn, to read, to study, to really come back in better than you leave this sanctuary, stay in the sanctuary. You'll be better off to stay here. Um, if you're going to follow your leadership, Listen to these teachers. I hope they have a lesson prepared. And that's what youth is about, instructing you in the ways of the body of Christ, teaching you, training you, molding your young people to be um, warriors so you can move up in the ranks. And as you get older, you move out of the youth and into the adult body of the church, and into the mature part. Um, and they'll train you and teach you for that purpose. That's why that uh, a pastor selects and uh, approves of leadership in the church uh, is because that leadership must qualify itself by example and it must prove that it is capable of being a leader, an example in sanctification of holiness and lifestyle, mannerisms, uh, dedicating themselves to the word of God and then uh, they must be examples in wisdom and knowledge. And uh, they must teach by example first, and then teach by lesson secondly. And so I want our young people to be productive. I want them to show growth and gain. I'd like to see evangelism develop in the young people so that you bring someone with you to be converted.
Pray the fruit of the Holy Ghost. Um, bring a young person. Invite them from your school, uh, your friendship with them in your neighborhood, and bring them and get them here, and then let them come into the body of Christ. Let them be added to the church daily. Uh, so let evangelism be in our youth, and uh, then let it be in the church. And so, and then um, if there's a if there's a department, you that are not teachers, you're just going out to be with someone. Don't do that. Stay here in the sanctuary. Let the teacher go, and only teachers out uh, in the um, uh, youth room tonight. Only teachers. Um, if you're just going to because you're a friend of the teacher, stay here. Don't go out. Uh, teachers only go out with our young people and no matter what department it is and it doesn't take five teachers to handle four children uh, so you um, uh, let, let a teacher go and that teacher have a lesson and that teacher be dedicated and that teacher be knowledgeable and then all of our young people be a part of the youth I have confidence in these uh, youth leaders and uh, they they are they are known of the church here as they lead our young people so may God give you a great youth service tonight I'll be praying for you and we'll miss you here in the sanctuary because we miss um, you when you leave we look for you to come back enlightened and bettered and uh, and so you you teachers you leaders are you ready to, to, for them to go now? All right, take the youth and uh, let them go and uh, give them some lessons, prepare them for the convention. It's just a week away and this is our last youth meeting before our convention. So everybody, uh, uh, teachers take charge and, uh, and the others stay in the sanctuary. Um, I certainly want to prepare the church for the convention is getting uh, closer and closer and we this is a beehive around the church here right now every day we're working every day we've been painting repairing uh fixing up um and planting flowers and uh, painting inside outside uh, getting ready to line up cleaning of our floors um, and get them ready and uh, for the dining room shining for the meeting and there's people working very hard right now to prepare for this meeting um, and I thank you that are giving uh, to prepare for this meeting uh, but every day every day there's someone working here laboring inside of this place outside it's amazing what all is being done and if you might not see it but you may but we're just getting the place ready and uh, there's people calling that they'll be coming and of course we know that we need to pray for some brother sister McCormick up in Panama City Florida they love this church and uh, there may be a chance for a seed work to be started in the Panama City area later this year um, from these folks. They love this church. They love this work, Brother Sister McCormick. They're up in some years, uh, but they are good people of God. And uh, But he came down with pneumonia three days ago, and they called me and said, Brother Arnold, pray that he can get out of the hospital and get enough strength to come on down to the meeting. So we want to pray that God will uh, uh, help. Uh, then Sister Sharon over in Little Rock, Arkansas, um, she wants to come. Um, she's Her church has been a dismembered, taken out of the city. It's no longer there. But Paul Fulton died, and uh, instead of ministers coming in and building up the church, they came in and took the church apart and uh, scattered it, scattered the sheep, scattered all the people, and there's no church there now. Uh, but Sister Sharon watches us on the YouTube, and uh, 
she gave strength to her and Sister Souter, uh, two saints there in Little Rock. And uh, they, they uh, Sister Sharon said today, uh, pray that I could get uh, strength. It's snowing here. We've had such a bad winter and um, it's cold and, and uh, we, we, there's so many airports being affected by the snow and pray that next week that will let up. We're supposed to have a nice warm week here in Florida, but I don't know about the rest of the nation. And uh, when people have to travel through airports and make plane connections. And so we'll just uh, pray that God will um, uh, move aside the hindrances um, and these folks are out uh, lying and uh, then Sister Cynthia up in New York, um, she was praying that her heart will be all right. She would like to be at the meeting. Um, and um, so we want to pray. Here's a note here. Uh, and uh, from Brother Merriman, let me see if I can put this together. Aunt Sarah Starkey called Ed, this is Brother Merriman, and asked to have, this is Kemi, from Kemi here, to pray for her. Her health is deteriorating. Dad is also very sick. But yes, Brother Merriman now is not uh, strong. He's not feeling up to par. And uh, misses a lot of the meetings. Uh, and then his sister, Sarah Starkey, I prayed for her years ago when she received the Holy Ghost. And uh, she's up in West Virginia. So I want to pray for Sarah Starkey. But there's, there's a great time now as we only have uh, this time next week. We'll be looking right in the face of the meeting and um, have one more weekend. And the saints here have been under a burden, a strain the last few weeks, trying to prepare the assembly. Uh, some of us have been going night and day here almost to prepare these grounds, to get uh, things done, to get for, ready for the people to come. And uh, we, uh, we covet your prayers that our strength will not fail. Uh, and that uh, we will be strong enough to go on through the meeting. Um, and uh, because it's, I believe it's a meeting that is called of God. And uh, I want you to sound a, a, a great charge upon this assembly. We're blessed to have the 67th annual meeting in Bradenton. 67 years ago, Brother Roberts called the first meeting, 1948. We had our first meeting here. Had no dining room, had no kitchen for to cook in, had no dining room to eat in. Um, we, um, the, the ladies cooked right here, right down where these seats are. The sisters of the church had great boiling pots with fire lit under it. And uh, they were boiling potatoes and, and they were cooking um, uh, they had uh, a fire built, or the men built fires underneath the great large frying pans. And we were frying chicken out here, frying fish, and, um, uh, all of many things out in the open here, praying it wouldn't rain, uh, that uh, we had no dining room. We, we had no nice place to sit down uh, when we called for a, a, a meal, to a meeting to end. The folks would come across the street and they would get a chair set out on the ground over here. We didn't own this. We only owned that uh, lot over there. Uh, but it was from that seat right there over and over, we didn't own. That belonged to uh, Mr. Walter Harden here in the city. But the people of God were determined to have a meeting. And uh, we, they would come across and uh, they would get their food and we set chairs out for the people who came from the north to, to be with us. And uh, we ate out in the open. Uh, many sacrifices made. Yes. Many of our people sacrificed. Uh, they, they really sacrificed. Yes. We were a very poor assembly. We didn't have a lot of work in it. We didn't have a lot of um, uh, jobs, uh, paying jobs in the assembly. And yet God put it in our hearts to have a meeting. Yes. So this is the 67th year uh, that we have been having these meetings. And so uh, we, we, we're honored to have these meetings. 
We never know what size they will be. We don't know if the building will be full or not. Uh, we've been blessed the last few years to have a nice crowd here, uh, but we're not having it for the crowds. We're having it because God wants the church Amen. to have an, a meeting, to assemble his people oh, yeah. together, bring the church together. Yes. Uh, that, that's our vision. That's our, we have a vision in this yes. church. This church has always been a mother church. It's always birthed other churches, birthed other people, birthed other ministries. Um, we've always encouraged people to come in and be here. It's a pathway of charity. There's no meeting held in the United States like this next meeting will be held here next week. There's no church order that holds a meeting in Manatee County or the state of Florida like this meeting. Uh, if, if you'll come, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's altogether different. No selected speakers, no programs, no no songs um, um, uh, that's selected beforehand, uh, no selected preachers. Um, how can you have a meeting like that? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. I know a lot of people don't operate by the Holy Ghost. A lot of churches don't operate by the Holy Ghost. You tear the program up, they wouldn't know what to do. You take the you take the selected speaker out and uh, the bulletin out, they wouldn't know what to do. But see, we, we wait upon the Lord. We watch the Spirit. But they that wait upon the Lord, we watch the Spirit. We watch and pray. And uh, we don't know who God is going to raise up. And and sometimes a preacher will get up and he, he won't really say uh, the things that you might want him to say. But we teach our people, we teach the church, to be able to hear a doctrine and don't get upset because a minister gets on his feet and you listen about 10 minutes and you hear him say, well, he doesn't teach like Brother Marlowe. He doesn't teach like my preacher. He's teaching that subject different. We don't get upset and get up, walk out, leave the church, um, get all stirred in our spirit. He's a false prophet. He's no good. He's up there teaching something we don't believe. But we listen. We listen. We yes. bear charity of miracles. We, we put the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians into practice. That's why I say there's no order like that. Uh, we, 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 we put that into practice. Charity beareth all things. Charity believeth all things. Hopeth all things. Endureth all things. Charity is kind. Charity warneth not itself up. Charity puffeth not itself up. Charity rejoiceth not in iniquity. But in the truth. See, that, that, that's an order. That's an order in the church. And uh, if you're not taught that order, you, you won't be able to sit in a service where um, this one gets up and that one gets up. And some are highly anointed of God. And then some may just be grinding corn. And uh, you'll think they're shucking corn. You won't even think they're grinding. Uh, you'll just think they're up shucking corn. Uh, but, uh, you know, but we've learned to watch. Yes. We've learned to wait. We've learned to pray. And... Uh, We've learned to listen for doctrine. We've learned to chew strong meat. Someone gets up or starts talking about eternal judgment, laying on of hands, the baptisms, um, the church order, uh, anointing, the, the anointing oil, the holy place, the courts, the holy of holies, uh, the seven seals, seven thunders, the seven trumpets, um, heaven, hell, um, life, death, uh, you won't get upset because it's not a Sunday school lesson that your teacher taught you in Sunday school and uh, he taught it uh, literal, carnal. He didn't teach the, much of the Bible is taught in a carnal method by carnal men. Uh, not all spiritual men stand in the pulpit Amen. to teach a spiritual lesson. Amen. Uh, and much of the Bible is taught in, in uh, prose and poetry and sayings uh, just at a natural carnal level yes. uh, but when a man of God gets up and begins to teach the scriptures uh, and he's speaking with a Hebrew tongue not Egyptian it's a Hebrew tongue Amen. it's not a Babylonian tongue it. it's a Hebrew tongue yes. praise the name of the Lord yes. did you know all the Hebrews start listening 
Hey, you know, a Hebrew can understand Hebrew, uh, but you speak a, a Egyptian, he doesn't understand that. Uh, he, he understands Hebrew. And so uh, we're going to have a meeting where it will be a great blessing. People are coming to be healed. Brother uh, Daryl Henry here, his daughter-in-law, Charlotte, is bringing uh, her mother. Uh, bringing her mother. And her mother believes she'll be healed of cancer. She's coming a thousand miles. She's coming a thousand miles to be healed of cancer. And she believes if she can get here. I wonder what we're going to need to do as a church to honor that person. And you know, when that woman pressed her way through the crowd and touched the hem of Jesus' garment, it would have been a sad ending with a sad story in the Bible if the Bible had said she touched him. And Jesus had said, no virtue is going out of me. I don't perceive any virtue leaving my body. That would have been a sad picture in the Bible. That woman fought her way to touch the hem of Jesus' garment and be healed. And she was healed. One thing about touching Jesus, if you really break through and touch Jesus, you will be healed. You will be blessed to the Lord. I said if you break through, if we have worship tonight in the spirit and in the truth, if the church can just rejoice in the Holy Ghost, rejoice in the Word of God, if, that, if this three-day meeting, four-night meeting, can be in the spirit, as John said, I was in the spirit, the book of Revelation, chapter 1. But I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. I'm glad he was in the Spirit. I'm glad there's people that can get in the Spirit. You won't bless me if you're not in the Spirit. I can tell you now, friend, you can talk one hour, two hours, ten minutes. You will not bless this man right here unless you get in the Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. But you can't touch me with your carnal mind. You can't help me with your carnal mind. You, you can't fill my soul with your carnal mind. It takes the Spirit of God. It takes the Spirit of God. I said it takes the Spirit of God. Praise the name of the Lord. We can't worship without it. We can't have church without it. We can't preach without it. We can't have honor without it. It takes the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. Praise God. The Spirit of God. My God, I can feel that right now. I'm telling you. If you can let the Spirit of God touch you tonight, your body will start to be healed. When the Spirit of God touches me, I get away from physical and mental and emotional affliction. I rise up in the Spirit. I get out of my doldrums. I come out of my pity. I come out of my pain. Because Jesus, you can't touch him. And when that woman touched the hem, of the garment Jesus. immediately Jesus said I perceive virtue yeah. is going out of me I'd like to brother uh, when this when this great assembly comes together here next week I'd like for virtue to start flowing out Amen, of every corner of this place Amen, Amen. Amen. when they bring that, that dear child into this room that when they walk her through that door the spirit of the living God will say you have not driven a thousand miles in vain. You have come to Zion. You have come to Jerusalem. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And now be praying people. Now be fasting people. Now be saints that are on the job. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. God wants to move in this meeting. And there's, there's, a, there's, a, wonderful, there's a wonderful work to be done in this meeting. The Lord is wanting to do a great work uh, in, in this meeting to come. So I, I see uh, that we that we are at the point where 
ministers must make right decisions. Amen. Ministers must be able to lead the church. Jesus. Not the church lead them. Not the church lead them. That's out of order. A church that leads a minister, that is out of order. Amen. Uh, uh, the ministry must lead the church. Yes. Right. Paul didn't say, I will follow you as you follow Christ. No. no. Did he? No. 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 Did he say that? No. He said, but follow me as I follow Christ. The leadership must be in the ministry. And then people need to be accountable to the ministry. You're not accountable to the ministry. You're just a priest. You're like, just going and doing your thing. That's a, you'll decide to do it, you'll do it. You'll go and you'll go. You'll come and you'll come. Uh, that's a freelancer. Uh, but but uh, a, a person that follows biblical order and they, they, they realize that, uh, that someone is accountable for them and they're accountable to that someone. And they, they won't let a problem be in their life in the church as a saint in that church. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll get that out of there. They'll take that out. I want to work here a little bit uh, as a pastor. Uh, I want to work on some areas here. Uh, you, you won't nurse a problem too long. You'll talk it out. You'll get it out. You'll yes, pray sir. it out. Uh, you, if there's a problem, someone said, I don't have any problem. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. Praise God for everybody that doesn't have any problems. Amen. Amen. I wish the whole world had no problems. Yeah. Wish I had no problems. Yeah. But if you do have a problem, uh, there's leadership. There's a ministry. There's a prayer life. There's a Holy Ghost connection. There's a, a biblical, the, the Word of God. There's scripture after scripture. Uh, that you can use, apply. Uh, there's a poultice in this book right here for every sore in your uh, in your spiritual life. Amen. Every sore. Um, uh, Lazarus was full of sores. Full of sores. In the 16th chapter of Mark, uh, and, and Luke, brother, pardon me. Read those two parables, if you will, when you go home tonight. There's a parable of the rich man and Lazarus in the 16th chapter and then in the 15th chapter uh, isn't it of Luke there's the parable of the prodigal son and in both these parables it shows a wasting of a man's life and then recovering of that man yes. and did you know that's what we are in tonight Absolutely. we're in a recycling Amen. of our life and we're being recovered and I'm being recovered and you're being and this church is being recovered and if we can get enough recovery here this will become a great church because we'll recover from our sores and we'll recover from the swine's pen and we'll decide that our father's house has all the goods in it that we'll ever need and like the Jewish nation that is the prodigal son in the 15th chapter of Luke, when that Israelite decides that his Gentile brother, the eldest son, that's in the house, we're in the house. Yes, we are. We're the eldest son. Yes. That younger brother took all of his goods 2,000 years ago, his inheritance, and wasted them by rejecting Christ. Yes. By rejecting Jesus. In the parable of the prodigal son, uh, you've got the rich man and Lazarus on the screen. In the 15th. But in the 15th chapter, I'm there. In the 15th chapter, um, and and the the, the prodigal son, uh, and get those verses up where the church out here can follow me in this lesson, um, brother Steve, as soon as you can. Um, go down. You'll have to go down further than Luke 15 4. Uh, go go on down. Let me get it over here and help out with this um, Bible study. Uh, yeah, the, yes. All right, now you're down at where it is now. And he said a certain man had two sons. All right. That was the Jew and the Gentile. God has two sons. Yes. God has two sons. Now, one of them, the, Jew, the Gentile, is the oldest son. The Israelite, the Jew, is the younger son. 
long before God ever cultivated, developed, or formed Abraham and his seed, yes. he had Japheth and dividing the isles of the Gentiles yes, in Genesis 10 and 5. Yes. By Japheth, long before he called Abraham, the Gentile was here long before God ever called the seed of the Israelite. Yes, and so the Gentile is the older son in the house. And God had two sons. And he said the younger of them, that is the Israelite or the Jew, said, Father, give the portion of goods that fall to me, and divided them unto him as living. And 2,000 years ago, all the portion of goods that Israel had was divided to them. And they spoiled it, and they wasted it, and they went and were scattered down to a citizen, a Gentile, and for 2,000 years, they have been in the swine pen, yes. eating the husk, yes. eating that which hugs it, uh, that which is abominable. But now after 2,000 years, this younger son is going to look as, as the rich man, I'll get, I'll go there in a minute. I won't go there now to confuse you. But this younger son is now at the time. Mark March the 3rd in this country. How many know what's going to happen on March the 3rd in our nation? Do you know what's going to happen? Are you aware? It's of national promise. It's going to change the course of this nation. Yes, it will. Politically, it will forever alienate millions of people from Israel. And it's going to draw millions of people to Israel. And millions of people will face judgment over March the 3rd. Yes. And millions of people will be blessed of God over what's going to happen in this country. The president of Israel, the prime minister of yes. Israel, has been invited to address this nation. Our Congress, um, and, and he has been invited by the House of Representatives Speaker Boner from Ohio, Yes. The president did not invite him. No, he didn't. The reason he did not is because the president is not for Netanyahu, or uh, pronunciation, uh, of, of the prime minister. He is not for him. He has become divided. He has alienated himself yes, he from is. Israel. Any nation that turns against Israel any political leader that turns yes. against Israel is going to be cursed of God because Israel is a chosen people. You cannot reject them. You cannot curse them. You cannot despise them. But our president and the Democratic Congress, almost to the man, is going to, uh, the, the seats will be vacant. And we'll have a divided Congress oh, yes. to hear this great, important head of state. We are insulting him. We're insulting yes. Israel. Yes, sir. But God is allowing it. Amen. Because how many believe that God has in control yes. all things? Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. And if the president of this country and the leading of the vice president if their seats are not filled on March the 3rd, it will alienate forever millions of people in the vision of politics. But more than that, God is going to say enough. And he's going to make changes. And that man that addresses our nation, I have no, nothing for his personage, but he's a head of state. Yes. And God is in control. Yes. How many believe the Bible said the Lord is the governor yes. among the nations? Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord is the governor Amen. among the nations. You cannot do this to this leader. Yes. America cannot insult a chosen nation. They should be standing by them. They should be feeding them arms. They should be building them up. Our, our, our forces of America should hover over, protect that nation, yes. and see 
that the nations around them don't come in on them because Israel is the apple of God's eye. Yes. They are the seed of God yes. in the earth. Praise the name of the Lord as a nation. I'm talking about as a nation. And so so uh, when we look at this parable, this younger son uh, is going to look up out of the hog pen that he's been in. Did you hear the uh, prime minister, the president of Israel say the other day after those Israelites were killed over in um, one of the Danish nations, uh, uh, Denmark was it, over there, where they were killed. Uh, he said, come home. Israel, come home. Don't be out there and let them slaughter you. Don't live in those nations where they hate you. Don't live there uh, where you've suffered Hitler's cruelty already. Come to Israel. Come, did you know thousands of them right now are fulfilling the scriptures and thousands of them are going back into that homeland again praise the name of the lord because jesus is coming soon because we're in the end of an age we're in the end of a time and the and the and the and and and, and the uh, younger son knows he's fed up with a, what the citizen the gentile has been feeding him he is going to look and see a remnant church. Yes, sir. You say, oh, look here on 7th Avenue and look over there in that city and look over there in that city. What do they have to look to? God is getting ready to do a quick work Come on. and cut it short in righteousness. Right you can believe that or not, but God is going to wake up some people. God is going to stir some people. Some people are going to get anointed of God. We're going to have church in the Holy Ghost. There's going to be a remnant across America. Across America, in Europe, there's going to be a remnant church called the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, not in name, but in deed and in word. And the Holy Ghost is getting ready to do what a work. You say, Brother Marlowe, I don't see it. I don't see it. All I see is all this stuff going on. Well, just keep your eyes in the lowlands. Keep your eyes down in the muck. Keep your eyes among people. Look on people, and you'll fail God. You'll lose out looking on people. You'll just keep on looking on people, and you'll lose out with God. But let your eyes raise up. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Hallelujah. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. We must become a flaming fire. We must become anointed of God. Every one of you must learn to sit in that chair and not let one minute of your mind go on foolishness or fickleness or your neighbor. Get rid of your neighbor for two hours. Yes. Get rid of them. Yes. Don't, don't even realize that you want to talk to them. Get every bit of the word of God. Yes. Sing the songs. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Let the Holy Ghost come in. Yes. Let cancers drop off from us. Yes. Let illness leave us. Let miracles happen in the church. I say set the church on fire. Let's let it burn tonight. Let's let it burn tonight. Did you come here to praise the Lord? Did you come here to give him glory? Did you come here to give him a praise? Is anybody ashamed to praise the Lord here tonight? Is anybody ashamed to lift your hands and say, Lord, I love you? Is anyone ashamed to, are, are, are you ashamed to say, Lord, I just want to praise you right now. I just want to give you the glory. I just want to thank you for getting me out of the swine's field. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that younger son is coming back to the older son. You know who he's going to see? That Israelite, the house of Israel, the, the Jewish people, they're the chosen people of God. They're going to see the Father. Standing and saying, come home. Come home, Israel. Come home, my chosen people. I've got the best ring. That, that's the wedding ring to put on your finger. I'm going to marry you again. Praise the name of the Lord. I divorced you for your sins. But I'm going to marry you again. Praise God. God is going to marry Israel. Jesus Christ is going to marry the bride. There's two weddings going to take place. Praise the name of the Lord. God is going to marry Israel again. Amen. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. 
He divorced her. Oh, yes, he but he's going to remarry her. He's going to put the covenant back together. Praise God. House of David is going to be established again. Bless the, the tabernacle of David is going to be raised up again. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, my, 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 my. Praise our God. And then there's going to be another wedding. And it's going to be the wedding of Jesus Christ to the body of overcomers. Hallelujah. Wearing the white linen garments of righteousness to the saints. So here, you're going to see the Father. Now in the 16th chapter, there's another healing that takes place. And that's the healing of the, uh, of the beggar. And here in the 16th chapter of Luke, uh, that this parable, and you notice that before I leave the 15th chapter, uh, he not only puts the best ring on his finger, uh, but he puts the best robe on him. Yes. And that robe is his covering again. Yes. Joseph's coat of many colors is going back around Joseph again. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. He's going to put that uh, garment back on him. Praise our God. And then... Uh, the fatted calf is going to be killed. And you know what the fatted calf is? It's the battle of Armageddon where the nations will clash in the valley of Jehoshaphat and God will deliver Israel out of there. Praise the name of the Lord, but he'll kill that fatted calf. He'll kill that calf. That fatted calf, that's a type of all the nations that will be gathered together to war and uh, uh, curse Israel and uh, take them out and forever extinguish them from the face of the earth. But God will not let it happen. Praise the name of the Lord. That in calf will be destroyed as a sacrifice, and the nations will no war no more for a thousand years. But God will use that for his wedding of back to Israel again. Praise the name of the Lord. Then in the 16th chapter, here is the rich man uh, clothed in purple and fine linen, bearing sumptuously every day. And this is a picture of Israel. Israel, who had all the goods. The younger son, they had the robe, they had the covering. They clo were clothed in purple, uh, the suffering of the law. And, and uh, they were rich, and they had everything. Uh, all they needed, their miracles. They had their miracles. They had their, uh, they had their Red Sea crossings, their Jordan crossings. They had their manna fall. Yes. Uh, they had their rocks split open yes. and water come out. Yes. They had their prophets. They had their yes. order. They had all the order of the tabernacle and all that God gave them. They were rich. But there was someone at their gates that wasn't rich. And that was the beggar. Because while the older son remained in the house, he said, you never killed a fatted calf for me. You never put a ring on my finger. See, because uh, he was awaiting his marriage. But he, the father never gave him a ring, never put a ring in his finger. The older son, the Gentile. Yes. Because the Gentile can't be married uh, uh, to God the Father. The Gentile must be married to Christ. Yes. Because it's Christ that died on the cross. He died uh, on the cross for the uh, Gentiles and, and <laughs> suffered for them. And so here in the 16th chapter, this, this, uh, uh, this uh, beggar uh, is uh, full of sores. And uh, uh, let's look at that uh, for a moment and get your mind right on it. Praise the name of the Lord and uh, this lesson. Uh, but he said uh, in, in the 16th chapter yeah. and verse 1, there was a certain rich man which has, uh, no, no, going down further than that. 19th verse, isn't it? There was a certain rich man, uh, Luke 16 and 19, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Isn't that what the woman said? Yes. The dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Over the dogs came and licked his sores they comforted one another. They were dogs. The beggar was a beggar, but he was a dog. He was a, a, as a lonely dog, and he was a beggar. And the Gentiles were full of sores, full of sins. I was full of sores, too, until I found Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. He healed me. 
He delivered me from my sores. So there shouldn't be a lot of sores among us in the church. But Christ healed those sores. Let him take care of those sores. Let him heal the wounds. Praise the name of the Lord. Why sit around and lick your sores like a dog does? Why, why beg for crumbs like a dog does? See, just because you're a Gentile. Because here, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's uh, bosom. You want to find the uh, funeral for the, rich, uh, for the beggar? I will give you the chapter and verse, thanks of God, yeah. Church of the Living God tonight, where they had a funeral and they had a resurrection uh, for the beggar. The beggar died. It came to pass that the beggar died. If you go to your Bibles in the 10th chapter of the book of Acts, the Gospel of Acts, there was a man named Peter that was led to the householder Cornelius and preached to them, and it was contrary to nature. But while he was preaching, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and the Bible said we heard them speak. Praise our God in other tongues. Bless the name of the Lord. Right there, the beggar died and was resurrected. That's the, that's the funeral and the resurrection for the beggar here in the parable. The story. Uh, Lazarus, full of sores, but he was carried when he died by Peter's words, by the word of God, by the gospel. He was carried by that word right into Abraham's bosom. Praise our God into the bosom of God. And that's where the Gentile is right now. The beggar is no longer in the streets full of sores, but the beggar, the Gentile, those that believe, those that are saved, those that are baptized, those that are repented, the Gentiles that are converted, the seed of the older brother. We're not beggars in the street anymore. We're not desiring the crumbs that fall from the table. Thank God we have been carried. Yes. How are we carried? Yes. By the Spirit of God. Yes. It has carried us. Yes. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, yes. you die a Gentile. And by faith, Hallelujah. the Holy Ghost carries you while you're speaking in tongues. And you are receiving the Holy Ghost. It carries you into the bosom of Abraham. Uh, that, that, the, the, the same covenant, yes. It carries you into the same covenant. Has the breast to nourish you. Yes. Abraham's bosom. The warm bosom of faith. There's no bosom like Abraham's bosom. Yeah. You won't find another bosom like Abraham's bosom. Yeah. Abraham's bosom is where the Gentile church is resting right now. Between the breast of the old and the new. Yeah. Faith of Abraham covenant of Abraham grafted in contrary to nature the covenant renewed the covenant restored praise the name of the Lord God does not work outside of covenant relationship if you have a relationship with God it's a, it's a covenant relationship you have it's, it's, it's a covenant if you're saved it's because you are in the covenant that God puts you in you're not an inward ordinary person ordinary citizen uh, I was talking to Brother Johnny this afternoon. There, praise our God. Oh, you have a nice smile, Johnny. Praise God. You know, you have a nice smile. And, and uh, I was talking to Brother Johnny, and uh, he was telling me something on his heart. And I said, no. No, that's the way it is, Johnny. I said, no. As a man of God, I can tell you what God intends for you to do. See, I'm not a pharmacist down at the pharmacy, handing out medical prescriptions. Come on, come on. I'm a man of God. Right. A man of God doesn't hand out medical prescriptions. He hands out healing words. Amen. He hands out direction. Amen. He gives you insight. He, if you'll listen to him, he'll keep your ship off the rocks. If you'll listen to the man of God, he'll heal your life. If you're here tonight with sores on you because you're a Gentile and you've been lying at the gate before this meeting is over, I don't care if you've been saved years ago, uh, how many, if you came up under my ministry, or who you are, before this night is over, get back into covenant relationship with God. Amen, 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 amen. I don't want anybody in this assembly that's in a position of leadership and out, out of a covenant. 
I want you just drifting and doing and saying and going and performing like you want to. I want you to get in the bosom where you're hedged in, Amen. where you have a covenant, where you have to live godly. You can't live ungodly. Where you have to live holy. You can't live unholy. Where you can't live in sin. Where you can't do what you want to do. Where you can't go where you want to go. Where you can't make plans like you want to. But you'll get in the bosom of Abraham and you'll go by Bible order and you'll get under Bible teaching and you'll be under Bible instruction. Praise the name of the Lord. And if you are to lead, then I'll follow you. But if I'm to lead, you follow me. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Remember, we both can't do it. It'd be confusion if both of us try to lead. But if, I, if I'm to follow you, then show me the example. Show me your calling. Show me what you've got to, for me to do. I'll get behind you and follow you. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. But, but if God has an honor me to lead you as long as he has, then if it's for his leadership in the Holy Ghost or another one of these men or you or whomever God calls, uh, I won't always it'd be, in, God never leaves a man, a temporal man in a position. Uh, Abraham's gone. Yes. Paul's gone. Right. Uh, John's gone. Those men are not here now. No man that's temporal stays in that position forever. God only uses it for a period of time. Every prophet only prophesies for so long. Every teacher only teaches so long. Every preacher only preaches so long. But as long as he's a prophet, honor that office of a prophet. As long as he's a teacher, honor that office of a teacher. As long as he's a messenger, honor that office of a messenger. See, as God will heal you right. of those sores. God, God will heal uh, this beggar of his sores. God's people should not have sores on them tonight. That was for that beggar back there. But he was carried into Abraham's bosom. And now this rich man died and he went to hell. And he's been in hell ever since. Yeah. Israel has been in hell. They have been in hell in Germany. They've been hell in the Scandinavian countries. They've been in hell uh, in, uh, in the Middle East. Uh, the nation of Israel has been in hell all over the world because they were rich and they fared sumptuously and they took their goods and they spoiled them. But here comes the beggar. Now we are the beggar in Abraham's bosom, but we don't have swords. And we better not have. Let's get rid of all the sores, all the sores, because we don't want any sores. Praise the name of the Lord. Did you know I'm going to lift my hands tonight and say, I have a God. I know a God. Oh, my God. Lord, I want the Holy Ghost to come here. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't want to sit around here like I've got putrefying sores on my body. I want all of you to know your preacher is a healthy, hearty Amen. child of God. Amen. Amen. I'm not nursing a bunch of sores. I don't have a bunch of, I'm not a sore hand. I'm not a sore thumb. I'm not sitting around with a sore spirit. I'm not sitting around with a sore attitude. I've got rid of the sore. Praise God. I'm in the bosom of faith. Coming. Faith relationship between the two breasts. Praise the name of the Lord. And I don't carry a sword. I'm not full of sword. You ought to shout right now. Everybody in town ought to just shout right now and say, My God, I may owe a Sears, I may owe a car payment, I may owe a rent payment, I may owe a house payment. I haven't paid my taxes yet, but I am not sore. Praise God. I don't have any sore. I've got rid of my sore. I'm giving and, and, and this uh, and, and, and Lazarus now the, and in hell verse 23 
he lifted up his eyes being in torment yes. and he sees Abraham afar off and Lazarus fall down. Now the younger son is looking at the father, Abraham, and he sees him afar off. And he's far off now. He's still he isn't right there yet. He's still far off. But let me tell you something. That son is going to come back to the father's house. And here's what here's what the rich man said. Father Abraham, verse 24, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. We've got some people watching uh, YouTube in Israel and they've communicated with us now three times uh, since they've been watching and uh, they're having, they're worshiping God underground in Israel because you can't open a public church in the land of Israel right now and proclaim the Messiah, uh, Jesus uh, of Nazareth. Uh, but uh, they're doing it anyway behind the doors. And I'm looking, I'm looking. You say, Brother Marlowe, you live in fantasy. Did you know I'd rather live in fantasy of what you call fantasy? Yes. I call it faith. Come on. Yes. Yes. You may call it fantasy. Amen, brother. I call it faith. Yes. I live in faith. Yes. And any day, yes, I'd get a round trip ticket yes. sent me where I could go to Israel again, Sister Marlowe. <laughs> And you know we were over there one time and go to their house and and the spirit of god come on us in israel and i and i say i come here to dip my little finger in some water praise god <laughs> that's that prophet that's a pointing finger that's a pointing finger that's a prophet yes sir and and i i i've got I, I, I want to, uh, somebody said, you're, you're living in fantasy, Brother Marlowe. Yes, when you get out of your reality, as you call it, yes, and you start living in faith, uh, miracles are going to happen yes. in your life. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. 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 Yes. Yes. You're living your reality and die. Oh, yes. Get in faith. And miracles will happen. Because there's going to be a famous dip in the Spirit of God. Dips in water. And it's going to cool the tongue of that parched, of that parched rich man. Praise the name of the Lord. Because somewhere God is going to use a finger of God to touch an Israeli man and start the revival in Israel that will lead to 140. 4,000, 12,000 from every tribe, fulfilling Revelation 7, fulfilling Revelation 7, 12,000 from every tribe, they will come back and be sealed with the Spirit of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Get the finger. And of course, uh, in verse 25, Abraham replies back, God replies back, and he's teaching uh, the son now, this uh, uh, rich man, uh, that thou now lifetime receivest good things. He gave him the picture of Lazarus, the Gentile, received evil uh, until Christ came and the apostles preached. So now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and uh, you, and there is a great gulf fixed, 2,000 year gulf, by the way. That's how far that gulf is, 2,000 years from Calvary till now. So that they which would pass from hence to you, the Gentile cannot, neither can they pass to us, neither could you come to us. That would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Now he's pleading. Israel is now pleading in repentance. I have five brethren, uh, that he may testify unto them. This is the scattered remnant of Israel out from under all the five nations beginning with Egypt and on down uh, to Rome, uh, that uh, the scattered remnant of Israel, uh, Israelites will be gathered from in the Middle East. And he said that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he'll point them back to the law and bring out from the law the picture of Christ, their Redeemer, and their Savior. And finally, uh, it, it goes on to say, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he reminds them, he rebukes them, he reproves them before he saves them. Well, they, they, they wouldn't hear, uh, uh, they wouldn't hear Moses and the prophets, yes. and would they hear 
if one rises from the dead, uh, will they hear? They will hear. There's a remnant that will hear. There's a remnant that will hear. So let's get ready for a great move of God. I said, let's get ready for a great move of God. In our church here, let's get ready for a great move of God. You that are sitting in the valley of decision tonight, I want you to come to God. Before the convention starts, you that are sitting in a place where you know that you're not in the place you should be, come to God. Get away from that doubt. Amen. Get away from that fear. Yes. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Repent of your sins if necessary. Come to God. Give yourself back over. Get on the telephone. Become an evangelist. Talk to someone. I went out last night uh, and talked to Brother uh, Lamar Eason and uh, Chris. And uh, I said, Lamar, it's been a long time since you've been in the house of God. Uh, I haven't forgotten you. I'm praying for you. He'll be back. He said, Brother Marlowe, I want you to know I'm not out here running the church down. I'm not uh, 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 belittling the church. He said, I'm so glad you took time to come see me. See, somebody needs you to talk to them. Somebody needs you to visit them. Somebody needs you to start a ministry with them. Praise the name of the Lord. So I, I, I just took that time and went out. Couldn't find the place. Wandered all over East Bradenton. Uh, out in the east part of the county. Uh, you ever try to find a house in the dark and you've never been there and they have no street lights and you can't read the mailbox? Uh, but, but you know, I stayed with it. I stayed with it yeah. until I found a fellow. I said, Lord, send me a Savior. I need a Savior yeah. with a GPS. Praise God. Uh -huh. Here come a fellow walking his dog down the street. You know, you can't ask God for many things, no. and he'll not do it. Come on. Why don't the church get stirred more than they do? Why don't we just cry to God more than they do? Did you know God's all around us? God's right here. Let's shake off the shackles. Let's shake off the garments. Let's, 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 every now and then shout. I don't care if you shout over here. Shout over there. Somebody, praise God. Stir the water. Stir the church up. Put on the church. First church of the frozen, praise our God. Amen. We're the first church of the chosen. Bless the name of the Lord. Stir yourself. I don't get emotional. Yes, you will. I get you, you sisters right now that are calm, cool, and collected. If you look down at your feet right now and saw a nice big Florida bug wandering uh, toward your toe. I would have a reaction going on here uh, and somebody would think you were stirred in the spirit. And you would be, but it would be the spirit of God. Pray and, and let one mouse run across here and this church will not be the same. Amen, amen, amen. Well, what would happen if the Holy Ghost Yes, yes, come on, pray the Father God. Come on, come on, get your, get your, get your. for year after year, after year after year, no one did. Don't you think I have a right to be jealous over God's people? Oh, absolutely. Do you think a man of God has a right to be jealous uh, over the people of God? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Paul was, Paul was. So, 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 thank God, thank God. I'm not the beggar, I'm not the beggar lying at the gate. I'm in Abraham's bosom tonight. Yes. Praise yes. God. Yes. I'm not full of sores, yes. Sister Sue. I've got my healing. Yes. I've got my healing from those sins, yes. those sores. Yes. So I hope you've gained something from this lesson tonight. Praise, Praise our God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. 
Play us a song. Give us a praise. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. I'd like to testify. You can. Go ahead. Part of your ministry. Well, I thank God. Yesterday, I had the victory. Yes. Today, I have the victory. Yes. 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 Tomorrow, I'm going to have the victory. You know, I ask God every morning of my life, direct me. Let me say what you want me to say. Do what you want me to do. Think. I want God to be in complete control. Amen. I came to the church today, feeling, and now sometimes Come God on. doesn't do like you expect Him to do. Come on, that's right. That's the Lord's name. I came to the church, Come on, Brother Rhodes was nice enough to give me a paintbrush. Yeah, that's right. I said, Lord, are you sure? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> but I do want to testify. It's been about a year since I came to the church. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank God for that year. Amen. Amen. I thank God for that year. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. But now I'm hitting, well, I made 84. Another month I'll be reaching for 80. I'll be there, 85. And I think, well, it's about time to slow down a little bit. Yeah. No. But it seems like every time I want to slow down, yeah. my foot slips off the brake onto the accelerator. I thank God. Yes. For the direct for his power. Yes. For guiding. Come on, I thank first. God for yes. what he does, what he's done in my life. Yes. I have grown from the day that I from the day that I met Brother Marlowe yes, yes, in the dining have. room. Yes, we have. And I thank God. Yes, yes. we have. So I thought hitting 85. But I feel good. Praise God. I feel good. God has healed me. God has taken. Do you remember when brother when I was standing here? Yes. Brother Marlowe got a rag. Yes. He put oil on it. Yes, I did. I love a man who follows the Spirit of God. Absolutely. Right. And he stuck it in my mouth. Now I want to tell you something. I'm a gagger. I gag over everything, but I didn't gag as we prayed. Yeah. Brother Rhodes took me to Sarasota. My car wouldn't make it. And he, I had to have this test. And after we had it, you know how the report get back? Negative. Negative. Yeah. The fight oh, is God, I believe you, Lord. Yeah. Oh, You're I a believe. healer. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Hey, you're a healer. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. I've been asked to, every fifth week, to have the church service at the one nursing home up in Cortez Road. Today, I told Brother Lewis, I said, I'm going to have to leave. I got an appointment. I went to, what do you call it, Langdon? Is that what, Langdon? I'm going to have the Sunday services there Glory. every Sunday at noon. Glory. Yeah. And I thank God for directing. Come on. Yes. I thank God thank that if we yield ourselves to him, yes. 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 Amen. he will use us. Yes. 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 He will use us. He yes. will direct us. I'll tell you something, I haven't been to one of the services like we're having coming up here. But I am looking forward to it. 
I am looking forward to it. I'm looking for an outpouring of God's spirit such as we have never, ever, ever had before. I believe it, Mr. Oh, I believe it. It's going to happen. You know, I believe in laying on of hands. But I don't think it's going to be necessary. Amen. I think that the power of Amen. God will be here so great. Yes, yes, you won't have yes, to yes, touch. Yes, Maybe somebody's shadow oh, will go by. Yes. But I think the shadow of our de of the Holy Spirit is and will continue to be in our service. Yes, I love this church. Yes, I love the. Why do I love it? There is no form. Man is not in charge. Yeah, my All right, Come on. God is in charge. Yeah, I was talking to a lady today Holy at Langdon. <laughs> oh, let me tell you. They took me to wherever the services would be. They said, she said, this is where the mass service always was, is. I thought, Thank you, Lord. I said, do you have room for more chairs? I said, do you have more chairs you can bring in here? I said, she said, yes. She said, I, we do. <laughs> anyway, we're going to try to put it to good use now. Yes. Glory. Yes. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Come on. Yes. Yes. Put it to good use. Okay. Yes. 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 I'm going to play a song and I'm going to sing a song. All right. All right. You say, I didn't know you could sing. I don't. You'll find out in a minute. <laughs> I sing it down and, and it's on all my heart. I love you people. Amen. Hey, love you, Brother Bush. Talk to our brother. Why do I love you? Isn't the Lord good? I didn't know how to love. <laughs> Lord bless you. Thank you. God bless you. We bless you. In this, in this nature, I didn't know how to love. But God, the power of God, the changing power. I've got to tell you one more thing before I do what I say. I had on my phone on the entry a call from Christian Fellowship and Jews. I don't know if you're familiar with that organization. Yes, yes, yes. And on the answer, Brother Morrow talking about the Jews coming back home is prophesied and God from the country for God and sent them so on. But they said that through the wings of angels, which is bringing the Jews from Russia, the Ukraine, and all over, that they have in 2014 brought over one million Jews back into Jerusalem. I thought, thank you, Lord. That's the move of God. That's the fulfillment of God's word. Praise God. It's the end time. Praise God. It's the days of the end time. Praise God. God. The end of the age. Glory to God. Nations all over. Nations. Nation. Might be better if you <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for the nation. You know, before we came to the Lord, we did a lot of things. We were looking for something. I was, you know, Brother Kenny and I were talking a few weeks ago, and he, he, we were talking about our past lives. Brother Kenny said, you know, he said, I thought I was having a good time. I said, I did too. 
I didn't know that I was burdened down until God answered prayer and picked me up. I said before, but God is ever present. God answers prayer. People were praying for me. What I didn't know that those people were Pentecostal. <laughs> and when they said they were praying for me, they weren't talking about just one or two of them. They were saying to the church, Brother Don Bush needs the Lord. And God got a hold of me. I've testified before. When did he do that? Well, I was 22 years of age. That's when he did it. How did he do it? Like I said, I thought I was having a good time. I thought I was enjoying life. I didn't know that I was burdened down. But I went into my bathroom and I did something that I could never ever remember doing before. I wept and I prayed. Dear God. Dear God. Amen. God got a hold of me, and I got a hold of God. Amen. And I walked out of that bathroom. What did you do? Did you just stand in there? No, I sat down beside the commode. I put my head over that commode, and I cried, and I prayed, Amen. and God pick me up. Amen. Then I wanted to go to church. I thought all those guys that were sissies and went to church, I found out something. It took more of a man, more of a woman to serve God than it does to go flow down the stream. Amen. 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 A short time later, I'm going to stop with this if that's the way I should do. I'm being led. A short time later, there was revival meetings in a neighboring town about 30, 35 miles away. I went. I wondered, I, 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 you couldn't keep me out of church. <laughs> Every opportunity. So I went. And I didn't know what they was talking about. But the evangelist was preaching about the Holy Ghost. I didn't know what he was talking about. And there was a man, there was a man that was there and they was all gathered around him praying, saying, let fill him, Lord, with the Spirit. I didn't know what we were talking about. No. I said, give it to him, Lord. Yeah. Give it to him, Lord. And the power of God hit me, and I hit my on my back, and God filled. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was filled with the Spirit. I spoke in tongues so long, so hard that I lost my voice for two, three days. Didn't have a voice. I thank God. I said, I have the victory yesterday. I have it today, and I'm going to have it tomorrow. Why? Because he lives. Because I depend upon him. I traveled along upon this lonesome way. Jesus and me. Now the road 
may belong to heaven's pearly gate. I know that it's narrow. I know that it's straight. But Jesus is there through eternity. to 30. Praise God. Right. I'll get Sister Marlowe's town car out if it runs out to 35. Praise God. I got a van, brother. Amen. Got a van. So we'll be here tomorrow evening and we'll head to Port Charlotte. Praise God. And uh, he's done a van. Thank God. Let's fill Port Charlotte tomorrow night. Praise is unto God. Now here's here. Something you need to be mindful of. Both of you young people had a great service. Yes. We prayed for you that you would. We've had a tremendous meeting here. We've had a lesson on the Jew, the Gentile, the prodigal son, the rich man, and Lazarus, uh, full of sores, being healed, not eating crumbs any longer. Praise our God. Getting ready for a great revival. Great revival. After the, after the convention's over, we're going right into revival. Praise our God. We're not going to let the church die, whip her down. Amen. We're going to have a meeting. Sister Misty is having a procedure tomorrow. All right. Let's remember Sister Misty Borman tonight. Having a procedure in the morning. A medical procedure. Brother Hank is having a heart catheterization Friday morning. Monday morning. Monday morning. Monday, 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 Monday. Uh, okay. Monday morning, Monday morning, Monday morning, having a catheterization. All right, Brother Hank. All right. We're all going to be praying, marching around you, holding you up, 
Where did you have it? Manatee Memorial. What time? We have to be there at 6.30. I think the test is at 8. All right, 6.30. That means I better eat my eggs early Monday morning. <laughs> Praise God. Amen, amen. Prayer works. And uh, be there. And then Charlotte, her mother, is coming. I'm so happy to hear this. Praise God. And uh, Yes, praise God. My brother Tom, that's Sister Ethel, he is nearing 100, right? He isn't doing well, and I, I want him to live until after the convention. She tomorrow is praying her brother will live until after the right. convention, where she can see him again. He'll be 100 years of age in July. And he's not doing well. He has a cancer in the throat area. Of his tumor in the throat area. He's cutting off his, his breath. Her brother Tom. Tom Adams, a fine man. He's been my brother in law all these years, and I know him well. And there'll be no dinner Sunday, and uh, so we're getting the dining room ready. And uh, and Brother Leroy Ware, uh, Patricia's sister, passed away in Rochester, New York, and they're going up there. And Brother uh, Rhodes told him we would remember him in prayer, so put Brother Leroy Ware and Patricia on the um, on the prayer list. And that's, we'll be working around here Saturday. And uh, Brother John Henry, do you need help on getting this floor? Uh, Saturday. And Saturday and Monday, I'm going to do it. Saturday and Monday, you'll be working on the dining room floors. All right. We'll, we'll be around. I know there'll be men around helping. Mm -hmm. And uh, get that. Oh, I'm sorry. Just Carol. Yes. Mm -hmm. Your voice is too soft. He needs more cleaning during the meeting. You need cleaners during the meeting? Not before, during. But during the, during the convention itself, we need sisters to volunteer instead of brothers. Brothers or sisters, volunteer. And um, to just see Sister Caroline for each service, especially the night services, especially the night services, and get the sanctuary ready for the next day. So you sisters and brothers, please see Sister Carol, and don't let her... Uh, being here by herself, or one or two trying to do it. This is the big building, and I don't want you to stay too late. Go home and get a little rest if you can, but we need to keep it clean because God's people are coming. And um, heard today there's about 12 coming from West Palm Beach, Brother Garrett over there, and Thursday we'll be picking up 12 from um, Kingsport, uh, Tennessee. And then um, we're picking up uh, Brother Sister Gunter from Greenville, Tennessee, and Brother Reuben over in Tampa from uh, Urban, Texas. And so there's going to be a lot of folks coming in on Thursday. Praise God. All right, that's all I have. Made the Lord. Oh, no, no, there's one more. There's one more. And uh, Brother Buddy told me, Adam, Sister Diane's son, uh, we all know Adam grew up here in the church. Uh, he was in an accident, is that right? No, he's in his house. He's in home. He heard his ambulance back. He hit a tree with his car. Hit a tree with his automobile. Well, you don't come out good when you hit a tree <laughs> with an automobile. So he's at home with a ankle and his back. With an ankle and the back. Uh, severely injured. And so let's remember Adam tonight as we pray. And what I do with these requests when they come in, I take them and put them together, and then we have prayer in the morning for them. We'll have prayer for Charlotte tomorrow night. We'll be praying. Praise God. I heard the prayer. Yeah. <coughs> brother, brother Marlowe. My sister Carol. Carol. My mom, her throat cleaned up. Sister Wanda Schoen, I'm missing her. Sister Brenda Cox. They were in an accident. Um, her husband and her were in a truck and uh, in a trailer. And I 
car came up back of them going high speed, couldn't stop, ran into them, and uh, ran the trailer all the way up to the back of the tailgate of the truck. And uh, Sister Brenda called and said, Brother Marlow, I don't think I'm injured severely, but I'm hurt. I'm hurt. And I, I won't be there tonight. So she's praying to be here the weekend. Just remember Sister Brenda Cox. Sister Carol Crawford. Sister Carol Crawford still on the sick list. Just remember her. Brother Marlo, Jeff Kinzer called me today. <laughs> and he was, you know, he thought I was working in the office, so he wanted to tell me about his mom. And uh, he was telling me that the other night that they wanted to take her to the hospital and she wouldn't go. That all she wanted was you to come out and pray for her. And that Jeff said that she would have no part of going to the hospital. She just knew if you came out and prayed for her, she'd be okay. And he said she was better. He said the fever went away after you left. And he said, but then she did let him take her, you know, the next day, yesterday, because she was still bad. We sure want to keep Sister Phyllis in prayer. Keep her in prayer. Do these prayer requests, I know they're taking time, but do they touch you? Yes. God help us to never eliminate this in the church. No matter how much we want to go home, we'll never eliminate this from the church. Because I have compassion for these people. Morgan Little, a young woman, a victim of epilepsy, severe epilepsy. And as she grows older, it's getting worse. God help her to Help these sick folks. Jesus, have compassion. Fathers, we pray right now as a congregation. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh Jesus! 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 Praise God, amen. Dear God of heaven, right now by your word. Oh, let us get back to where we can say, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't know, my heart is so touched tonight. People of God. All the people of God. I suffer with them. I suffer with them. I want to see them relieved of their tension, their strain, their sickness, their burdens. Because I know what people can do when they can praise the Lord for victory. Praise God. And I'm believing tonight. I don't know how I don't know how tight you want to or how tight you will grip your neighbor's hand. Amen. 
Jesus feed them. Jesus, I know it's by me. It isn't by words. It isn't by strength. Oh, Jesus. It isn't by power. Some of you can feel an angel visit your home today. Praise God. Praise God. Do that. In the name oh, of that wouldn't happen, Brother Marlowe. Oh, that you can't do that. will happen. can happen. Yeah. Yeah. Praise Brother Marlowe, pardon me. Let me say this. The Holy Spirit impressed me. I never do this. But we don't need a prayer line. Amen. God... If everybody would just put their hands up tonight, Praise yeah. God, amen. in this place, amen. the Lord said He would bring release to people in this building. Oh, do it, Lord! Praise God. We don't need to line up. Just put your hands up. Yeah. Just put them up right now. I'll call on you, Lord. I'll call on you in the name of Jesus. Oh, my brother, my sister, my brother, my sister. My brother, my sister. My brother, my sister. I'll do it, Lord. I'll call on you now for my brother and my sister. I believe that you'll heal me. I believe you'll deliver me. I believe you'll raise them up. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. Yes, you will, Lord. You will. I know you will. I know you will. I know you shall. I know you can. Oh, my God. 
Amen. Your spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise oh, Jesus. God, it's a miracle. Praise Jesus. Jesus. Oh, praise God. Praise Jesus. Yes, Lord. Let's don't back down from where we are in the spirit tonight. Let's don't back down in your home, in the church. We have come to a point tonight. We have climbed on another level tonight. We're in another spirit tonight. Let's don't back down. Let's push the devil out, 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 out. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God, amen. Out, 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 out. Push it out, amen. Oh, God. We pray that your will is working. Praise God. Praise God. The mic here. Are the mic here? Sister Mary Thompson. We honor you on your birthday. And if there's anyone else with a birthday, tomorrow, the next day, we're going to sing happy birthday. Just a merry day. I had a birthday Monday. Monday. We honor Sister Mary Day. Praise God. Let's sing to one another and then we'll go home on this plateau where we're here this day. Go home and don't get out of the spirit. 